Hello people, this is Power here with the review of the Ultraman Rube, DX Rube Slugger. So this is the primary weapon that both Rosso and Blue use, um, and that they gain in Episode 3. Obviously, the Slugger has been a long tradition of Ultraman 7. And obviously, as you can see, it includes the Zero Crystal. Um, the box showcases... Rup Slugger Blue, while well, here is Rup Slugger Rosso. So, this side here has Rosso with the Rup Slugger, then this side has Blue with the Rup Slugger. The top just has more images than the bottom. The back of the box just basically shows what you, how you do the stuff, and this side of the box shows what crystals are compatible with it. Obviously, Zero is included, and obviously he's compatible. But, um, this is the list of crystals that are compatible, so obviously, this side is the crystals that were released at the time. Taro, Ginga, and Seven. And then, the right has the crystals that are soon to be released, so that will be Tiga, X, and Victory. So, yeah. Let's get on with this toy. So here's the Rube Slugger. And obviously, here's the Ultraman Zero Crystal, which we'll look after looking at this. So, we'll just put that off to the side. And obviously, um, in box, it's packaged in Rube Slugger Rosso because um, it's separated like this or so. But yeah, basically, um, the way you detach it is you press the button here and then or press these two buttons here and just pull it out so we're gonna look at the I don't know what this slugger is called but on um, this is the other half of Rube Slugger Rosso um, this one this actually fits my hand pretty fine and um, it doesn't do anything it's just the end piece for Rube Slugger Blue but it's the under hand de slugger, I don't want to say dagger, for Russell, and obviously, like, these are prop size, um, they're not weapon size, they're prop size to the actual weapon, so, and here's the Rup Slugger Russell, um, this is the whole bulk of it, and this, like, the handle here is actually alright, um, I just feel like it's more comfortable holding this because my hand can actually fit through. While well, my hand can't fit through this because my pinky is going to be touching this part. And it's just this part's a lot smaller. Um, so obviously um, this is where the LEDs are going to be. And as you can see here this is where you're going to put your crystals. And as you can see from the slots, if I zoom in more. Um... Half of the pegs are gone, but then there's this additional peg. Um, yeah, we will explain that later. And obviously, uh, has these parts for the horns on the back, the speakers, the on and off switch, and this is the battery compartment. It takes three AAA batteries, which is a lot, <laughs> but you will understand why. So, again, if we form it to Rube Slugger Blue. Just simply peg that in. Um, I guess, like, you can see it kind of looks odd, but... Um, obviously, because I prefer blue, so I just prefer this mode because it's all in one. Uh, it's just that, um, you gotta be aware about... This This is actually not secure, so if you're swinging it around, be careful, because you can literally, like, swing this top half off that's the only thing i kind of don't really like about this mode it's like you're you're swinging all the heavy weight if it was like this then i think it would have been better if it was like this but oh well so turn it on just as you can see it's red because it's in Rupe Slugoroso. If I were to turn it on with the blade, it's blue. And that's that's what I really like about this toy. 
I don't know why I turned it off, but that's what I really like about this toy. This toy knows when things are inserted and when things are not. It's just really smart. Anyways, as you can tell, there's no buttons on this toy besides these buttons here because it's motion activated. Not as bad as the full full rabbit tank full bottle. So basically to attack, you just swing it. So that's the first attack. That's the second attack. So you only get two attack sounds for each mode. So if I were to attach this part, it will make a sound of attaching it. And then if I swung it, So again, I just get two attack sounds, and then if I detached it, it'll make a sound for that. Basically, um, there's a button here that presses it, so um, again, this thing does not do anything, so we're going to keep it off to the side, and then we're going to view what this does with the crystals. So obviously, um... This is Group Slugger Rosso, so we're going to put our zero crystal to Rosso mode, and then just insert it here. This standby will start in the color of the crystal, so basically what you have to do is that you have to swing this up to four times. So that's one, two, three, and four. Then you swing it one last time to do the attack. Um, that happened earlier than I wanted it to be, but basically, um, after that's done, um, then you swing it one more time, then, um, Katsumi will announce the finisher, so he said zero twin slicer, and as you can see, um, the light of the crystal um, emits, I guess that's the word. But then, um, after the finisher, you can actually still swing it and it will stay in this color. So yeah. Um, to remove the crystal, you hold this button down and just simply remove it and then it will go back to being red. So basically, um, if you don't understand what the charging up is, um, it's basically whenever um, they insert a crystal and they just swing the Rube Slugger around. Um, I don't know why exactly does it four times. I think it's, I think it's because um, it, it has to double up because this thing technically counts also. But, you know. Anyways. Um, now to put this in blue formation. And now, this is actually going to be different. So that process still counts, but what you only have to swing it twice now. So that's the first one. And then swing for the finisher. So that's Isami announcing the finisher of Final Slugger. And again, you can swing it for the color. So, like, I think, like, in this mode, it takes less swings to do the finisher, which I kind of appreciate, just so that I don't have to, like, do that stuff. Because literally, he just does that. But yeah, um... That's basically all you can do out of the box. Obviously, um, the back of the box says that you it can read crystals. So, we got Taro, Ginga, Seven, and then um, Spacium, Zeperion. Um, so, yeah. So we're just going to start the process. It's basically the same process, but, you know, just with different crystals. <laughs> 
twin stream slasher. I still can't pronounce it. I apologize. Um, I didn't bother doing the swinging on um, Taro because it's still red. spark shoot so now this is blue and seven And double emerald edge. So obviously, you might be asking, what does Spaceium Zaparion do if it's not on the back of the box? The Roof Slugger Attack. Basically, that's just all seven LEDs, and it's basically a white. Because, as I stated before, jeez, I'm forgetting how to zoom. Um, this only has half of the pins, and technically, they specifically programmed these three sets of pins for the ones compatible with this toy, which I think is actually ingenious. So then you might be asking, how do the other ones be, like, how did the other ones read then? Basically, I don't know what happened to it. Um, there's this peg, or there's this pin here, which you can't see because my light sucks. But, and it just went to sleep. Um, basically, so this is peg here that was not present on the Rube Gyro. Like, it technically is, but it's just a space, there's no actual peg. And basically, um, the crystals that are not compatible with the Rube Slugger have an additional peg sticking out here. As you can see with Jeed here, and then with, here's Grugio Bone. As you can see there, which is why I'm not going to bother bringing them out. And as you can see with Zero, he does not have that peg present. So basically, um, everything else that is not the seven crystals that you're supposed to insert will just create the Roop Slugger attack. So technically, it does less than the King Sword. Because the King Sword technically used the same pin system as the Roop Gyro. But they, um, the Rube, or the King Sword, I think, kept two pins on this side. So then, like, you know, Ultra Heroes and Kaijus had separate attacks. But here it's just one, somewhere after one button. So, yeah. I looked in, I looked too much into this. Anyways, um, blue, we're gonna do a weird angle, just because, so obviously we're gonna start with Ginga. I can't, I can't do the middle flick with my thumb, probably because I don't have nails. Galaxy Saber makes sense. I, I think that's actually a pretty cool nod to Ginga. All of these attacks are... Taro's the only one I can do that on. I 
I would like to see this one getting used. And then obviously, I like this one, if I can actually do it. This one was cooler in the show, and obviously white light. And obviously, um, you already know what this one's going to produce. I have to insert these weirdly. Kind of sucks that, you know, like, some of these are just stuck with, like, the Rupert Slugger attack, because, you know, I would have liked to see what Spaceium Superion does, like, Spaceium Flash or something, you know. Anyways, let's look at the Zero Crystal. So here's the Zero Crystal, and as you can see, um, again, I really like this background. Ultraman Zero, I don't know what Kanchi is, but obviously if you compare it to Ultra 7, this is what I would have expected Zero to have for the background, you know, just for, like, like his background whenever he transforms into Zero, but no, it's just the mid of light, so I find that pretty interesting, plus, you know, it's cool to have these two. Um, also, formation, blue formation, and then all of them, and... As you didn't know already, this is a different shade of blue. It's sky blue, basically. And he is B010. Let's get a Rube Gyro. The fact this is the only toy now that I actually have his full sound, I, I don't know if I should be sad about that or what. Um. I really like the color mix and it looks like the Typhoon from Kamen Rider. It's amazing. And then obviously the blue formation. Again, like this light combination is pretty cool. Okay, um, I promise that for the rest of the rib reviews, I'm only going to do it once on each side, just because I already did it with the demos, and I'm already so tired of it. <laughs> It feels so repetitive, so for my sake, I'm just going to show it once in Rosso and one in Blue for mine and your sakes. So overall, um, the Rip Slugger is a really nice weapon to have. And honestly, I think it's kind of more worth it than the what we had for the previous two years. Um, I'm, I'm excluding X, but, um, you know, what? well then again, like... Especially with Jeed, because in my opinion, while the Jeed call was cool, I feel like it was kind of pointless, because the only thing, like, the only reason why you would have gotten it is just so that you can get the shift into maximum sound, but, I don't know, in my opinion, I felt Jeed was too, like, Jeed went too far with trying to make the Jeed Rising compatible with literally every toy, so I'm happy Rube's not doing that. Because I, like, I'm just getting to another rant. <laughs> but, um, technically, you know, 
This toy is what the King Sword was, but it's just the King Sword did more because that was a changer. But um, for this thing being primarily a weapon, it's pretty cool and it's pretty fun to swing around with. Um, I hope that you can do that in the Naruki Kids Park game of Roop. Because, like, you know, with the joy concept, you can pull it. I want to do, like, the Roop Slugger attacks, please. Anyways, I don't know. Like, this toy is just a lot of fun and all. Like, you know, like, it comes with zero. So, like, I know you can get him, like, in Shogun set two. But, you know, I think it's just more fun when you get it with the... Like, obviously, he does more in here than in the Roop Jar. But, um... And obviously, if you already got, like, these three crystals, then you kind of have to get the Roop Slugger because technically these, like, you know, crystal compatibility and such. Um, but it's just a really cool weapon, and it's, again, a lot of fun to swing around. Again, be aware of the Roop Slugger blue formation of swing trying to do the Roop Slugger attack because if you, if you swing it too hard... This front portion and the crystal is going to slam into the ground. <laughs> and that happened to me like three times. So please just be aware you're trying to emulate the Roop Slugger Blue attack. Don't swing it so hard. <laughs> Anyways, that'll be it for this review. So I don't even remember what I say anymore. Anyways, this is Power Rider and I'll leave it people. Bye.